Good morning and welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker and here we are about to discuss Corn Laws inside of the Vicky 3 Academy. So, Corn Laws, what is it? Why are you going to use this? This is a journal entry and it's a journal entry that accomplishes something very specific and very powerful, but only for uh, like a certain subsection of countries. So, let's talk through the requirements for Corn Laws before we talk about what it does. So that way you know, is this going to apply to the country that you're trying to play? If it isn't, my recommendation is still learn this anyway, because eventually you're probably going to play a country where Corn Laws is going to be useful. Um, but if you're only playing the UK over and over again, then you can skip this video. What do you have to do in order to meet the requirements? It says at least one of these isolationism or mercantilism, but you can't actually set tariffs on goods uh, under isolationism. Um, and so really you have to be in mercantilism because you do need to have export prioritized tariffs on grain, which we will do momentarily. I just wanna, just wanna cover the rest of the requirements. We also need, in addition to mercantilism, we need the landowner IG to be powerful and when the landowner IG to be part of the government. So mercantilism, powerful, part of the government. The only reason that the, the Ottomans don't have it uh, triggered right away is that we haven't moved into export prioritized tariffs. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click on our, our market, we'll go in here and we'll click this. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up a new journal entry over here. There it is. A new journal entry has emerged, um, Corn Laws. So Corn Laws is gonna give us some on pulse events, um, but there's gonna be one in particular that's gonna be really helpful for us. We're gonna get an on pulse event that's going to prompt us to replace the leader of the landowner, in this case as the Ottomans, that's the local governors, with a different character. So let's wait for that one to show up Oh, there it is, a modern conservative. All right, so what the modern conservative does is it gives you these two options. If you don't do anything, then it will automatically keep the uh, not cool landowner around. But the this is gonna get us a cool landowner because first it radicalizes some aristocrats, which is just like always generally good because um, you should, you, if you're watching this video, you should hate aristocrats. So the modern conservative, it creates for you this new character who has this market liberal ideology. So this market liter liberal ideology is going to make it so that now the landowner, or in this case, Ottomans, the local governor, actually cares about a couple of things in a very different way. If you have an ideology, as the interest group leader, it's always going to over overwrite the base ideology for the interest group. So in this case, because of the market liberal uh, ideology, the landowners now are strongly in favor of laissez-faire. They're strongly in favor of uh, free trade. They're, they endorse child labor. And so what that means is you're going to have a natural tiny little happiness bonus with them, a permanent plus one, with, so long as this leader is around, from endorsing child labor uh, being allowed. Because you're not going to be able to get out of that in the early game when, when you have a strong landowner. In fact, you're usually not going to be able to get out of that in the early game with anybody unless you rush it. But what it does for you is more important than that. What it does for you is it means that now this landowner with this enormous amount of clout is going to help get laissez-faire done. And that's gonna be a dramatic increase in power from traditionalism. Traditionalism is very bad. Traditionalism is in fact, I think one of the worst laws in the game. Um, unlike the other worst laws in the game, serfdom and slavery, traditionalism does not explicitly give strength to the landowners, but it is one of those things that is explicitly supported by the landowners unless you have a landowner who is a market liberal which is what Corn Laws allows you to get. What you're doing here is you're sacrificing a little bit of bureaucracy, which you can fix, but it would allow us to switch out of traditionalism and into laissez-faire, which means that instead of getting this tiny little bureaucracy population cost multiplier, along with a 25% taxation capacity penalty, instead of that, we're getting a 25% discount on our loan interest rate, which for anybody is very powerful. It's really, really, really good with great power status because then you uh, you pay almost nothing for loans. Um, but it's also outrageously helpful for anybody in the in the world, right? Loan interest rate means that you can float on credit a lot more easily. Your debt becomes better and better the cheaper it becomes, right? More than that, laissez-faire, it gets you a plus 50% capitalist investment pool contribution. Very, very, very quickly, laissez-faire will generate an enormous investment pool for you, which you can then use to build things. Um, so laissez-faire, that it's an incredibly, incredibly big upgrade, and it's actually genuinely good for you. And not only that, 
but it also makes the local governors ecstatic. They love this law when they have the market liberal in place. So you're gonna get a plus 20 approval. And what that'll do, um, it will allow you to switch uh, out of slave trade, almost certainly, without causing a civil war, if you if you want to avoid a civil war. For that matter, if, you, if you've already switched into laissez-faire, you may want to just like keep stacking the happiness and switch into free trade. You do need to get stock exchange. I also wanna warn you that the switch from traditionalism to laissez-faire is blocked by serfdom. So here you see traditionalism cannot switch to laissez-faire because we have one of either serfdom or isolationism. So if you have serfdom or isolationism, you cannot use corn laws. Um, that's why serfdom is such a giant pain in the butt because it, it prevents you from doing the the really powerful things. Slavery is really bad for you because it does cost a lot of uh, potential growth for you because of the way that slaves operate as pops. But serfdom, in some ways, is actually like worse because of the impact that it has on your inability to utilize corn laws. If, if you're a chicken, by the way, you can go into interventionism instead of laissez-faire, but ultimately I think that most economies are going to benefit more from being in laissez-faire than from being in interventionism. Um, I think interventionism, generally speaking, is only stronger when you use your subsidy, when you use your ability to subsidize, um, if you are not actively microing your ability to subsidize, which you you can use corn laws to switch into interventionism. So you see this, local governors are lending support to the switch. So you can move from traditionalism into inter into interventionism, but I think the investment pool five percent aristocrats is not worth twenty five percent capitalist, not even close. Um, and subsidies, generally speaking, I think are going to be weaker than 25% loan interest rate reduction. If you are good at subsidizing things, it is very powerful. Build that into which economic system you want to go into. Um, but unless you are a super sweaty pro who gets really good at, at subsidizing, um, I think the fact that laissez-faire gets you 20 approval whereas interventionism only gets you five, means that in general, when I recommend corn laws to people, I gen I recommend that they, they go from traditionalism to laissez-faire. It's just, it's a lot of approval and it lets you do whatever you want to to the landowner without starting a, a civil war. It's also very, very helpful for specific countries that um, have a mixed interest group leader as the Ottomans. You always start with a moderate in charge of your landowner. You cannot re-roll into a jingoist which means that you need a way to manipulate the, the politics of the party, and Corn Laws does exactly that. All right, that's Walker. Good luck out there. I think I think being aware of how to use Corn Laws is going to help you in your, your interaction with landowners quite a lot, so I wanted to do a dedicated video to it. All right, thanks. Take care.